Hello guys, welcome back to the Beastie Room. Today we have something a little different, and it's something that some of you regulars might well have heard in the background. And that is in fact our little collection of Vietnamese mossy frogs. Now, um, we used to keep many, many frogs years ago, and uh, we got out of it, and we swore blind we'd never get into them anymore. But, as often happens in this hobby, some things are just too difficult to resist. And uh, we saw an opportunity to get some mossy frogs, so that's what we've done. Now, this particular video is gonna cover the build um, of our mossy frog enclosure. Now, um, this has been done in stages, and uh, and it's actually been done in one of our custom made um, enclosures. So you would have seen them for our spiders. We've done them for the spiders. Well, we had a spare one and we've done it out for the mossy frogs for now. And hopefully you'll get to see just how we've done it. We've, um, we've done it with um, expanding foam, bits and pieces, and it's all, it's a fairly simple procedure, but it's a bit of a time consuming procedure because it, it just takes time between each process to cure and get ready for the next process. So um, without further ado, we're gonna go forward, have a look, um, and just sit back and see what you think to this. Some of it's done in fast forward, others we've done back at normal time. So uh, this video probably will be a little bit longer than most of our videos, but hopefully, fingers crossed, I'm really hoping you enjoy it as much as we did making it. All right, see you soon. Well, here we are. This is the very, very start. This is one of our custom enclosures. And what we're doing now is we're just, there's two holes I had drilled in the back of these enclosures so that I could put electrics through if I needed to. And uh, I don't actually need it in this, so I'm just gonna fill these up with silicon. So we'll just let that go off. Now that's all done. Now I've decided to go with um, a, um, this is filter matting, and this is what we're going to put in the bottom rather than have substrate. So this is going to be a, a substrate free enclosure. There will be none in it at all. So we're just cutting it to size now, and it cuts really, really easy. It's very, very simple stuff to work with, and it's really, really nice. So what we're doing there, we see there, we've cut it to size. Now we obviously need a water area, and um, one of the things that we found with the mossy frog is they don't actually spend much time in the water unless they're actually um, pairing. So when they're copulating, they tend to um, sit in the water. But the rest of the time, they're up on the branches or on the back of the tank, you know, they're, they're out of the water. So we're making a second level now. And uh, we don't want it to be completely square. So we're just going to cut the edge off of it. To give it a nice gradient. There you go, and that just gives us a, a secondary level. This will all become apparent as we go along. And we just check in, make sure it's just exactly how I want it. When you're making a build like this, quite often it changes as you work along. You know, you'll get new ideas and things will just spur you into thinking of different things. Now this is the expanding foam. Now we've gone for, a, um, we bought the gun for this because it just makes it a lot easier. Now I made a bit of a mistake there. So look, this, the um, expanding foam adheres to the glass a lot better if you just spray it with a bit of water, which is what we have just done. And then we literally just fill it. Now we could have gone much, much thicker with the expanding foam, but there really wasn't any need. We didn't want a huge, thick wall of it. So we've done it quite, quite thinly really, but as the name suggests, it will expand. The good thing with the expanding foam as well is you really can't go wrong. 
if you put too much in you just cut a little bit more out it's very very simple stuff now one thing that we did notice with this this did take around about three maybe four days to actually cure and uh, dry up completely and the thicker you put it in the uh, the longer it will take to cure so now we've left it for three or four days and um, it's actually it's all dried now so we're literally just hoovering up clearing up any excess some of the mess and everything else because now it's time to um, silicon the uh, the back of and the sides now you'll notice there that um, I forgot to film it but I have actually scratched off the surface layer of the foam and this is to make it a little bit rougher and uh, it just makes it better for the um, silicon to adhere to so here we go we're going to run a bead all the way along the uh, filter matting and remember the filter matting you can get at your local aquarium shop or pond shop they'll all do it the uh, silicon we're using here this is pure aquarium silicon um, so it's got no fungicides or anything like that in it so we're running a bead all the way around the edges first get all the edges in get them nice and clean and then we can literally proceed to putting silicon just about everywhere now as you can see there I'm wearing gloves this is a good idea wear your gloves because this stuff gets absolutely everywhere this was probably the worst part of the build. I didn't enjoy the silicon bit at all. <laughs> it was not a lot of fun, I can assure you. And it's best to do this outside as well because you really, really do need it, some ventilation because this stuff is strong. And uh, as you can see, I turned it over a little bit too quick there and all the silicon I put on the other side has now fallen down onto this side. So we live and we learn. And we're basically smearing this silicon all over the place now, getting it everywhere. And the idea of the silicon is because when we come round to putting our substrate in, we want it to stick to this so that we end up with a natural looking background. It really is so, so messy. And stinks to high heaven. So yeah. Make sure you're very well ventilated, wear your gloves, and uh, try not to get it everywhere. Now this whole thing, this took a little bit of time. I, th I would imagine it probably took us half an hour or more to actually get all this on and, um, and start laying our substrate all over it as well. Now you can see there, there's, there's a little filter there. We did in actual fact take that out in the end. Because we learned while we were doing this that the, uh, the frogs really didn't like moving water. So uh, we removed that little filter. And there we go. Everything now is covered in silicon. Including myself. Oh, we haven't finished. There is still more to go. There we go, dump a whole load more in there to get that smoothed out. There must be a better way of doing this. And unfortunately the actual silicon, it probably took two, maybe even three weeks now um, for the smell to disappear. And that's, this was left outside for the whole time. And we could still smell it strongly after a week. Um, it took a good time for it to actually dry out properly. So now we're using, um, this is cocoa fibre. Now I don't really like cocoa fibre, but it does work well in this sort of kind of thing, in this circumstance. So we literally have it in there dry and we whop it on all over the place. Now, in hindsight, I think we could have done with putting this in, um, having it damp, and it may have stuck better. It might have done a better job. So we literally just poured it all on in there and uh, pushed it all into the silicon as best we could. And then um, 
Yeah, once you've covered everything, there is nothing left to do but wait and let it dry. So it's been outside now for sort of two, three weeks, and uh, we're now going around with a hoover, and um, we're just cleaning up all of the edges and making sure that any of the loose substrate and everything else is gone. We, we want to get rid of it now because we want to have a bit of a tidy up and start setting our new enclosure up. So we're literally hoovering off all the excess, get rid of all of that, clean the filter up, or the filter matting, and all of the bottom of the tank legs. We, when we fill it with water, we don't want all this rubbish in there, so best to have a really good clean up now. Clean the edges because we're going to have sliding glass doors. We need to make sure that they actually fit in. And uh, also, the top, that is also sliding on this enclosure as well. So you need to make sure your runners are perfectly free of any debris. So we're giving the whole thing a really nice good clean now. Make sure it's spotless. And now we can start the fun side of things. The actual making of the inside of the enclosure. This is, this is the bit that I really enjoy. And what we're doing now is we're going to, this particular palm loves the water and that. So we're going to leave it in its pot. So we're going to cut some of this filter matting out. And then it can just sit in the corner there. And then the idea being that um, as it goes down to that second layer of filter matting, the, uh, the water will actually be there, the water level. So the roots will go through the pot, down into the matting, and um, it will absorb everything from there. Frogs being the messy things that they are, it will take all the nutrients out of the water. So there should be plenty for that plant to feed on. There we go. That fits. So now what we're going to do, we're going to cut some, um, this is weed suppressant matting. And this is what I use in my bioactive enclosures to, uh, this is the membrane level between our bio balls and our uh, soil. Uh, the idea of doing it in this particular enclosure is because we want to cover the filter matting with it. Now the idea is, is that the frogs are incredibly messy, really, really messy. So by having the the uh, the matting over the over the filter mat, it means that it should, in theory, stop any of the really big, heavy, rough stuff, uh, rotting crickets, things like that. It will stop them disappearing inside the filter matting, um, uh, which means. Because these guys don't like running water, we're going to have to have standing water in the bottom, which means we can't really filter it. So what we have to do is regular water changes. So basically, it's only a couple of inches of water. And um, what we do is we tend to siphon it out once a week and replace it with RO water. And by having the weed suppressant down, it should stop any of the really bad material getting underneath the mat. So helping things stay a little bit fresher. We will see. So now we've got all the, um, the weed suppressant matting down. We're now going to look at putting moss over the whole thing now. And again, the idea with a moss is it will actually root into that, that matting. And hopefully... There'll be just enough water coming up through there that it'll keep the moss happy without it being waterlogged. And you'll see later on, when we when we put the water in, it's not going to be very deep. And it'll all become, you know, quite apparent then. So this is moss that we've collected. This is wild moss. We've done absolutely nothing with it. This is exactly how it was when we took it out of the field. So there is no need to wash it or boil it or all them other fancy things that people seem to want to do. You actually want it to be as wild as possible. All of the little organisms that are living inside there will do nothing but good for your enclosure. And there's certainly no threat to your, your animals, your spiders, your frogs, snakes and lizards, whatever you want to use it with. 
And to be totally honest, if you can use this stuff with amphibians, it is, they are the, the worst culprits for um, being susceptible to any kind of um, like pesticides or any dangerous chemicals. Amphibians are very receptive towards them and it will kill them really quick. So I've been using fresh collected moss like this for years on my amphibians and it's never ever caused any problems. Providing you collect it from sensible places. Now, if you're a little bit worried about any of that, check out our video, um, moss, mulch and branches. And that will give you an idea of what you need to do and the best way to go about it. So as you can see now, we've covered everything with, um, with moss. And hopefully when the water goes in there, you can see roughly what the water level is going to be now. And obviously in the room, because it's warm, we're going to get an evaporation from water and that will evaporate up through that filter matting and up through the moss, which in turn should keep our moss nice and just damp, moist, and good, good enough for it to grow. Now what we're doing now, we've got some simple um, stainless steel uh, paper clips. And we are going to use them to uh, pin our moss down into our, our uh, filter matting. And it will help it, stop it from uh, being moved around if the frogs start getting a bit heavy jumping around. They're quite big frogs. And if they start having a little tussle with one another, there's a good chance that they'll um, dislodge some of the moss, especially in the early days. Once it starts to grow in, it won't be a problem. So what we do is we just use these stainless steel, make clips out of it, and then we can literally just clip it into place and that will stop it from moving around. Perfectly safe, no harm to your animals. And of course, it's nice and cheap. Now bearing in mind with, um, with this particular build, it hasn't really cost any money. I think the most expensive thing was probably um, the two tubes of uh, silicon. This is all stuff that you can pick up in your local hardware store or on Amazon. You know, it's all available and it really isn't that expensive at all. And then of course, we've, where we can, we collect all our own wild stuff. So the only thing that's uh, growing in here that's actually been purchased is the plant that we're dealing with now. And we're just gonna pin that to the side walls so we cut the pins and they'll go straight into that expanding foam and that will be enough to hold it up. As the plant grows, it will eventually secure itself to the wall and uh, you'll see it will just take over. It will grow everywhere. As you can see now, it's starting to take a little bit of shape. Now for our branches. Now we've got an interesting thing with, um, with the mossy frog is they don't lay their spawn in the water. They lay it on leaves or branches that overhang the water. So what we've done here is we've put this branch in such a way that it actually goes over the top of the pond. And uh, by doing this, they will climb onto that branch and they will lay their spawn on the underside of that branch. I'm gonna put another one in here as well. Now this is freshly um, uh, harvested uh, branches from the wild again. Uh, stuff that's just fallen on the ground. And as you can see, it's been there, it's quite old and it's, it's really, it's quite rotten branches. It's covered in lichen and moss and it's perfect for what we want. Again, absolutely safe, providing you collect it in sensible places. So as we were saying, the frogs will lay their eggs underneath them branches. And what happens is, is the uh, tadpoles are developing in a little tiny sack of fluid. And then as they get bigger and bigger and bigger, the fluid dries up and then eventually they just drop into the water and off they swim. 
So it's a very, very cool way of doing things. So now we're, um, we've taken some of the plant out of the, the enclosure that the frogs are in at the moment, and we're going to utilize that in this new enclosure. So we can put that in there as well. It's the same sort of stuff. This um, really enjoys the wetness. And as you can see, it's almost like a vine. And in time, it will take over this tank and uh, it will be everywhere, which is exactly what we want. The more leaves, the better. It will give our frogs places to hide, give them places to lay their eggs on. Absolutely perfect. So we're just pinning down some of these uh, branches from this plant and uh, just to help it on its way and then hopefully it will root itself in and it will soon be able to sustain itself it won't need any help and there you have it so now we've put it on the shelf and we're ready we're going to add some water we're going to get our levels in and as you can see there there isn't that much in the way of water depth it doesn't need to be very deep for the mossy frog they don't they don't require a, a lot of water that's not to say that they wouldn't use it if we did have if we had a bigger water area i'm sure they would actually use it but it's not totally necessary they only really use the water for spawn and for for mating um, that's when we tend to see them in the water is when they're copulating the rest of the time they're out on the branches so what we've done now is we've literally just sprayed everything and you can see there camera lady is um, catching the frogs out of their old enclosure and rehoming them in the new one now we're lucky here we've got um, 12 um, adult mossy frogs here and as you can see they're very very dark now this is because during the daytime they do go really really dark and it's this is one of their their forms of um, camouflage it helps them disappear and also as well we've noticed that if you stress them out a little bit like now they're being caught up they often change color because they're not a hundred percent happy about being caught now you can see that that one that was just put in the back there that's slightly slightly brighter green compared to this one now this one that's going on the branch now very lazy looking one look at it hardly even wants to hold on for itself you can see that is almost black and this is a common color for these guys in the daytime come the evening when they start moving around and they'll start feeding and uh, what have you they are quite nocturnal they will um they will lighten up and become a absolutely beautiful beautiful green and we do see them that color in the daytime if they're active sometimes they'll be that lovely green color in the day now you can see this little fella here he's actually uh he's quite light not as dark as the others he's obviously a little bit more confident a little bit more happy you can see how they get their name now the mossy frog they just look like a lump of moss in actual fact they resemble toads more than they do frogs you can see that one they're very very dark that's a big female that one there's another one there you see the younger ones the smaller ones they tend to stay a little bit lighter as well you can also see there, there's actually quite a lot of red in their colouring. Pretty eyes. Absolutely gorgeous. You can see the white patch there just behind the eye. That is their ears. You can't really see it there, but camera lady's uh, hands are actually wet where she's been in the water, uh, chasing the other ones around. There we go. Now this one is a very, very light green. And this is the colour they'll go to in the evening. This is what they normally look like. Beautiful, beautiful colouring. You can see now as the camera comes back how well camouflaged they are up against that bit of branch. 
they almost disappear. Ooh, here he comes, where's he going? We'll come over to have a little look. Now we feed these guys on um, crickets mainly. And uh, they have had roaches, but they, they seem to prefer the crickets. And um, Camera Lady has actually got them all now, excepting crickets from forceps. So she hand feeds most of them. Let's make sure that they all get plenty of food as well. And the tadpoles, we tend to feed on bloodworm, daphnia, things like that. And they will also take, if there's a, if there's a cricket carcass in the water, they'll also munch on that as well. As you can see, they are looking rather beautiful. Looking forward to see what the future holds in how well this group actually flourish. Such pretty frogs. Well, what did you think? It, like I said, it takes a long time. It's a real drawn out process. And um, the use of uh, expanding foam, silicon backgrounds, it's not something I've really done a huge amount with. Um, and I'll be totally honest, I'm not sure I even really enjoyed it. Uh, I like to just be able to get on. And that particular enclosure build has taken somewhere in the region of maybe three weeks to actually, from start to finish. But each little process is quite quick. You know, you, you it don't take long to actually do it. It's the curing time that takes the time. We put the foam in. It took something, I think it was about three days for the foam to completely cure um, where it was workable. And then the silicon, oh my God, the silicon. We smeared silicon all over it. And then we obviously put our substrate and cocoa fiber, which is something I don't really like, but it works quite well on the background. Um, so we done that and that took possibly two weeks or so sitting outside to actually cure to the point where we couldn't smell silicon anymore. So that's a pretty, pretty disgusting part of the job. That was horrid. But hopefully the end results are nice and good. Um, and as you would have seen in the video, we talked through some of what we were doing as we were going along. Um, and yeah, and hopefully our mossy frogs are actually going to enjoy their new home. Now, one thing that we have got, we've, um, we've got 12 adults in there and they are laying spawn pretty much continuously. They're always doing it. The only thing that we have found is we do believe we've only got one male. Now, um, we've only heard one frog calling. So it does appear to be one male. Now, with the Vietnamese mossy frog, this is one of the things that's caused... Um, issues for them in the past and that is the fact that males are very few and far between so we're not quite sure why that is maybe there's something to do with temperature where we um where the temperatures that we're keeping them at maybe this is we're throwing more females than males we really don't know we're just gonna have to play around now we've got tadpoles with ours already and uh, and we've got a bunch of little froglets that have uh, all grown on and getting ready as well we're going to do another build but a slightly different way for them. And, um, and we'll see, uh, yeah, we'll, we'll see what comes of that. Now, in terms of care for the mossy frog, the, um, most of the literature, and there is very, very little literature on these guys, um, but what is out there, most of them says keep them really, really cool. Um, as you well know, in here, it's like around about the middle of the room, it's about 80 degrees. Down on the bottom shelf, which is where we keep our frogs, it is a little cooler. It's around about 76, 77 maybe. Um, and they seem to be doing really, really well. So we're hoping we've, we've hit the sweet spot and, and they're going because they're, they're breeding and they're breeding continuously. So um, all being well, that is, that is a good temperature to be keeping them at. We have had them on a higher shelf and they've done just as well with a higher temperature. So maybe I think there is a little bit of leeway there. They're quite tolerant of temperatures. Um, one of the things that we did notice and we made a bit of a mistake on was we had 
large tadpoles, which are around about three inches, the tadpoles, they're huge. And we had some small tadpoles that we hatched off in the tank. We moved our small tadpoles into the tank with our larger tadpoles. And within 24 hours, they'd eaten them. So they, the bigger tadpoles killed and ate the smaller tadpoles. Even though there was an abundance of food in there for them, they still managed to um, predate the smaller tadpoles, which was um, a horrible mistake, really. But, you know, we learn by what we do. Uh, and it's not a mistake that we will make a second time. So um, we are now going to start looking at uh, making a nursery for our small tadpoles and keep them in the same size um, groups so that we don't lose any more. Um, so yeah, it's, uh, it's an ongoing thing and it's something that we can keep playing around with and just keep enjoying really. And we'll keep, it, keep you guys informed as to how things progress. Now, all being well, within a couple of months, the new enclosure that we've just done will be fully planted up. Um, the plant in there should, in theory, go pretty mad and cover the whole thing in leaves, which is what we really, really want. Um, another thing that we've noticed with them is they don't like moving water. So we was going to have the, the water filtered, but they don't like it. And it does appear that the dirtier the water, the better the tadpoles do. Um, but we're going to experiment with that because otherwise it smells something terrible. So, yeah. We will, uh, we will keep playing around and we will learn as we go. And hopefully we'll make some, some good breakthroughs and it's all knowledge that will help in the future to uh, keep these frogs successfully. Right, well, I hope you enjoyed that. It's something different for the Beastie Room. And um, yeah, we'll, we'll, see, we'll see what the future brings with these. But in the meantime, don't forget, be calm. Be gentle and love your spider and your frogs. And I'll see you soon, guys.